Hi there, I'm Miles Peterson, and you're watching a 3D Engineer. Now, I am really excited to show you what I've built here. This is my Federal Signal STL-10 Siren. I printed it from a uh, eSun ABS Plus filament, and I think it looks pretty good. Fire Engine Red color, they call it. These were mostly used as fire sirens when they first came out, and that kind of fits it. In today's video, I'll be giving this siren a little test and show you how you can build your own. To get a start, I had to print all my parts first. So I printed the rotor, stator, seven horns, the motor shroud, the mount, and last but certainly not least, the air intake and legs, which are all screwed together using number two 3 8 inch brass wood screws. I used this size for this project, but later found that you could probably get away with using half inch ones. And of course, the 130 DC motor. I know it may seem a little bit small for the siren, but it's actually pretty suitable for it. I got this one from a 200 RPM TT gear motor. I will not be using any gears, only the motor itself, which works great for my STL-10. I highly recommend taking apart one of these cheap motors to get one of these, because they literally spin at the perfect RPM at 5 volts. How great is that? Do keep in mind that some have a black back while others have a white back. So long as the gear motor ratio is 1 to 48, it should work. Now before you power up your siren to 5 volts, you'll probably want to add a 1 ohm resistor. The reason is because when you apply a full 5 volts, it sounds like this. That's a bit too high in tone. If we want it to sound like an authentic STL-10, you'll probably want to add some resistance. So here's a 1 ohm resistor, and it causes this much difference. That sounds much more authentic. Alright, so here's my motor, hooked up to my USB, and it goes to here. Here's the 130 DC motor. Inside of there, which is sealed up with hot glue, is my resistor hooked up to my motor, and eventually goes through this cable. Anyway, there's not too much going on in there. We can actually just power this on. Works. Here are the parts I'm going to be worrying about now. We have the rotor, stator, and motor. Boy, that's a tongue twister. And we are going to attach the stator to the motor, like this. It doesn't really fit in place, so we've got to add some glue. Now we need to put the rotor inside of the stator with the motor. Now we have the stator inside of there, and it fits like a glove. Look at that. No scraping whatsoever. Now let's fire it up. Now I've got my siren hooked up to a USB and here we go. Sounds maybe just a bit underpowered. That might be because of the lack of amps. So now we have a functioning siren. So what's the next step? Now we gotta put on the horns and the legs. Now without further ado, let's start this sucker. Uh, I actually added some wind down capacitors inside my siren timer, and that'll just add a nice wind down to it. This thing already has an amazing wind down compared to my other sirens, but this is just going to give it a more natural wind down. Well, let's test this sucker. Um, I'm going to be feeding this guy 5.5 volts. Now you're probably wondering why feed it 5.5 volts if it connects to a USB and USBs are just 5 volts. Well. They are exactly 5 volts, they're usually a little bit above 5 volts, and it's a little low pitch at 5 volts, so I decided to give it a little extra boost. Now, let's test it and give it a few signals. Karong. Alright, starting with a 30 second alert cycle. Here we go.
All right, that was beautiful. Now let's do Danger Drill. We will do this for uh, one minute. Here we go. Beautiful. Now let's do a few quick growls and I think we'll be done. Let's do an all clear. I'll just be manually pressing the test button. There you have it. That is my miniature STL-10 that I modeled myself printed and put together. You guys can build your own too if you're interested. Uh, links are all in the description. The STL files are available to download on Tinkercad. I'm Miles Peterson and you stay creative.